Welcome back to the channel guys, episode 42 of the Youth Academy Challenge. We're still in two competitions, Serie A and Europa League. We've also got the youth intake today as well, so let's do this. We are top of the league. Not only are we top of the league, we're top of the league by five points. Fiorentina dropped a couple of points lately, AC Milan have as well. Inter Milan are nowhere near, Juventus are actually doing quite well for them. And Napoli are nowhere near as well. The reason why Napoli are nowhere near is because they had a massive financial problem and had to sell like a fire sale for about five or six good players. Two of the players that Napoli had to sell as well were in the media dream 11. So they were among the best two players in the entire league. So they are struggling. Probably helped that Inter Milan have struggled as well, obviously. And we've been able to take advantage of that, which is really, really good. So Fernando's got 17 goals. Uh, Conte's got the most assists, well joint most assists with the Fiorentina striker we've got the most clean sheets, Bianco's doing his best but I can only think that if we had a better goalkeeper Bian our goalkeeper would have more, even more clean sheets than that um, Berzagli's got the most yellow cards, 13, I know you guys can't see that but it's behind me there, we do get a lot of yellow cards but that's because I've got get stuck in on and I do like it because in the match engine if you don't have get stuck in on your players just don't tackle it seems like, or it feels like they don't so yeah, really annoying, the only two games we've lost are away from home against Inter Milan and Fiorentina, as you'd expect. Probably the two best teams in the league um, in, in terms of like actual players and, and um, attributes. So yeah, 3-1 one, and 1-0. One, <clears throat> Everyone else uh, we've uh, we've managed to avoid defeat with. Also, another thing I'm going to show you guys really quick. Uh, let me show you something. Whoa. Uh, we beat Fiorentina 6-1 <laughs> at home. I, I don't know what happened. It was 1-1 it was one, one at halftime. And then... All hell broke loose. Well, Fernando broke loose is what happened. He scored three goals in 20 minutes. Yeah, I, I honestly can't explain what happened. I mean, if we look at the actual score, we smashed him as well. I don't even understand, really. It just was go, 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 and he just went mental. But again, that's what having a play like him is doing for us, right? Before that, it wasn't like that, and we couldn't do that, could we? We just couldn't do it. Um but now we're capable of blowing away teams if we get the chances because we've got a guy at the top end of the pitch that just put them in. Um, we have also beaten Stuttgart in the uh, Europa League round of 16. We beat them 4-2 away, which is nice. And then we only beat them 2-1 at home, which is interesting. But it's what it is. And in between that, we've beat Lazio 2-0, Monza 4-1 and Pisa 5-3. Pisa still, though, give us problems, man. I know we beat them 5-3 there, but it wasn't easy. Um, yeah, we lost in the Coppa Italia quarterfinal to Juventus 2-0 at home as well, which surprised me. And we lost in the Coppa Italia final 1-1 on the penalties to Fiorentina after beating Napoli on penalties three days before. So the extra time there and the penalties took it out of us and we couldn't quite get the uh, Super Coppa final in there. But it is what it is. You can't win everything, can you? Um, if we go back to December, before last time you guys were here, we beat Inter... Uh, Juventus 3-0 AC Milan 3-2 Cagliari we've had a really good run of form we've, we've, we've barely lost this season honestly it's feel really really good and we feel like a really good club like now I can go into the season aiming for the title it feels like that um, and also the youngsters that are getting better are only going to make the team even better so it's nice to see us in this position already I say already it's 2041 but you know what I'm saying so next we do have Atlanta at home, and I'm quite confident of that now. If it was away, I'd be a bit like, yeah, the Napoli game away might be a bit of a struggle. But even then, now we're at the situation where after Napoli's financial problems and selling their players, even away from home, I'm starting to think there, hmm, could get a win there, no problem. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a tough one. Juventus away is going to be tough, and then everything else looks fairly... Honestly, there's no Milans to play, there's no Roma, there's a, there's a game against Napoli, Atlanta, and Juventus. Everything else is... More than winnable, and we've done it this season. So, I think the title could be ours. I don't want to jump the gun, but unless we have an absolute rumble, maybe we get a few injuries around this area with the quarter final. Because I don't know the quarter final opponents yet. Um, the quarter final Europa League looks like this. Uh, if it loads up, yep, there it is. So Toulouse went through against Copenhagen. Feyenoord beat Roma on penalties. We beat Stuttgart. Valencia beat Celtic. Liverpool beat Tottenham. That's going to be a tough one over against Liverpool. Um, Real Betis absolutely smacked Astrel Amadora. Um, Montpellier beat Rijeka. And Sporting Lisbon lost to Dortmund. Dortmund's going to be a tough one as well. Um, it looks like as well there, if you look at that top scorers, Betis have got a guy that's got 14 goals in the competition this season. And Jesus, yeah, he's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's come through the academy. That's pretty cool, that, isn't it? He, doesn't, he hasn't really had any massively good seasons apart from maybe that one. Maybe he's just a guy that scores in the Europa League because he's only got six in twenty-five in the uh, in in the La Liga. I wonder where they are in the league. 
Fourth. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, some good players. The Tottenham guy there, that won't matter anymore. Tottenham are out. He's very good too. Um, this real Betis guy, uh, 8.28. It's that midfielder. They've got quite an old team, don't they? That other striker was 31. He's 32. They've just absolutely balled in the uh, in the Europa League. Fair play. Um, I hope I don't get them. <laughs> but, I mean, just we want to avoid Liverpool and Dortmund, don't we? That's what we want to avoid. But we're here for the intake. What I'm going to do today is going to be slightly different. So I'm going to show you the intake now. And then I'm going to carry on with the season. And if there's anything we need to show, for example, a game that might win is the league, or if we can get through to the Europa semi-final, maybe, or the final... I'll show that in this video. So this will just conclude the season, this video. So this is the start point. The end point will be the end of the season. Um, so it might be a little bit longer. That's absolutely fine. It's early. I've woke up quite early. And uh, and we'll get a lot done today. So I'm going to show you guys the intake then now. Let's have a look. Six messages. Here we go. Cancel friendlies again. We just want a goalkeeper and a winger, right? I mean, I don't even care about the winger. I just need a goalkeeper. It was an A in the preview for the... Five years out of the last six, we've had an A. We've had no goalkeeper. Really, really annoying. So, let's have a look. One, two, three. It is a goalkeeper, and he's five stars. He's Bosnian, which I don't care about. The intake's crap. The intake's not very good. But we can't lose sight of the fact that... Oh, please be have a good personality. Please have a good personality. Oh, my God, please. If he's an ambitious, I'm going to scream. Going to scream. He better not be. <laughs> he better not be. Please. Right. Oh, he's fairly determined. Okay. We can work with that. It's not the best, but we can work with it. He's six foot four as well, and he's half Italian, half Bosnian. Right. Okay. So, first player I'm going to check is Emmanuel Martino. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to um, sign up any of these guys down here. They're three and a half stars and they're unambitious. So, we're not even going to bother with that. We're going to look at these three. Probably won't even sign up Martino. Um, but yeah, the, it said that we had a good preview. The intake's been crap there, hasn't it? Obviously, it doesn't matter as much because we've got the guy we wanted, or we think we have. Let's have a look at him. Hopefully, he's not got, like, I don't know, four reflexes or four one-on-ones or four agility, like a really problematic uh, attribute that's going to cost us a... Like, oh, I hope he's good. Right. Anyway, Martino first up. Centre-back. Uh, it looks all right. I mean, he's got decent technicals. 13 passing, I like. Uh, it's just he can't jump. Maybe he's more of a left back. I think he's probably more of a left back. I don't think I'm going to sign him up. The massive problem with injuries. And he's outspoken and volatile, which isn't good as well. So, no, we're not going to bother with him. Don't need it. Uh, my under-18s are doing quite well at the moment. So, we don't need extra players in there. Um, let's have a look at Ella, Elia Ferrara. Now, this guy's resilient. So, this guy's definitely getting signed up. He's also four and a half stars. And he also could potentially play on the wing. I know he, was, I know he said he's an attacking midfielder natural centre. But I'm hoping he's a bit quick. If he's not quick, then the winger's not there. Let's have a look. He's got acceleration. He hasn't got pace. He's got dribbling, though. But he is a bit more of a winger, even though he's natural there. So we've actually got a winger. Hopefully he is... I do wonder. That's going to be up against Leone, isn't it? So that's going to be tough to be five stars against Leone. So I'm happy with that. I don't think he's going to be amazing. I'm not getting vibes that he's going to be like a world beater. But you never know. I'll definitely sign him up. And straight away, we'll work on his composure and his decision-making, which is final third, right? We'll work on getting that up. Um, but the big one is what we're all here for. There's the goalkeeper. Now, this guy, I need him to be good. Let's have a, What's his second name, then? So his second name is Bulyabasic. Bulyabasic? Let me hear Bulyabasic. Okay. Bosnian. Please be good, man. <laughs> I've waited, for like, how many years have we waited now for a goalkeeper? I was thinking about this last episode, and I was thinking... We've actually not had a goalkeeper come through since the start of the save because Bianco was already at the club. So we've not had a goalkeeper. That That is so rare for me. Usually I'm like, I've got a lot of goalkeepers. Um, in Greece, when I've, I've got another save on going offline, I've not played it in a couple of months, but I've got it going just for, um, just for like as, I, as and when I play football manager, I'm, I've got spare time. I've got two really good goalkeepers. I've got one that's won the European Golden Boy who's like probably going to be Greece's number one. And then I've got like a... Another guy that's been called up to the Greece squad as well. So, like, I'm, I've really got two goalkeepers that I'm trying to keep happy that are very, very good. So, it's like the other way. And on this save, I've just not had one. And I'm hoping this is the guy. So, let's have a look then. Samir Bulyabasic. One, two, three. Oh, he looks good as well. Oh, he looks good as well. <sighs> he looks good. He looks good as well. Let's go. Yes. Five composure, but... Yeah. 
We're happy with that. We've, we've, got, we've got to be happy with that. This could be the final piece of the jigsaw, guys. Maybe a winger. It looks like he's got good potential, doesn't it? Oh my god, let's look at his reports. Please be consistent. Okay, he's only got a, like an orange consistency. Not too bad. He's already very close to being my best goalkeeper. Do we just put him straight in? Or do we just play Bianco until the end of the season to try and get the title? I think we probably do that, to be honest. How old is he? 15 or 16? He's 16. Just turned 16 like eight days ago, so yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna sign him up. A bit like that to be honest. He wants a high wage, but that's good. It's a good sign. Um There we go, four grand. Then let's sign up for our uh, Take that off. We don't want him to become a fringe player yet because he might not make it. Now, he doesn't want as much wage, which isn't as good a sign. But that might be current ability as well, right? One's one star, one's 1.5. Um, I did say, I'm a bit disappointed with the intake, but I did say, didn't I, last time, that if we get a goalkeeper, I don't actually care if anyone else is like really bad. So that has happened. So that's good. To be fair, I've been saying that for the last five seasons. So finally, we've got one. I do want an, an upgrade to our... Head of youth development. Now, what I'm thinking is because we're in a good situation in the league, I'm thinking if we win Serie A, our reputation is going to go up again. What I've been thinking is we wait till the end of the season. If we win the league, then we look for another head of youth development. Try and sort of push us up again. Because Onazi's been good for us. He has been good for us. I can't lie. But we need some body better, I think, now. I think it's probably time. So, I'm going to play a couple of games. I'm going to keep going as I usually do. And then, in fact, do you know what? I'm going to show you the under-18 players first. I'm going to show you the under-18 players first. So, we've got these three that I'm really looking at. Um, Gaspari's gone down to four stars. Slovak, who we had high hopes for, has gone down to four stars. But I'm still, I'm still like, I'm still going on the bench for the first team, etc. And uh, Ben Savani, Stufi as well, has gone down to four stars. So, again, out of the, a lot of these five-star intakes that we, we've been getting, not too many of them have actually kept their five stars. Omrani, the goalkeeper as well, went down to three and a half, which really annoyed me because I started giving him a few matches in the, uh, in the easier games. But there is three players that have kept their value. The first one being Marco Arena, the left back that came through. Now, he hasn't got much better, but he's got his value, and his value is up to 10 million. So, I don't know what to do with him. Been working on a defensive position, and it's worked. So, I think we probably changed that to quickness now, get his pace up from 10, because I need to get him some game time in the first team. Um, maybe in some like home games against teams in the bottom of the league or against uh, some lower level Europa League opposition or even some uh, Coppa Italia games as well I have played him twice this year once in a Serie A game and once in a Europa League game he did alright but I need to give him some first team football like I said he has kept his 5 star potential ability and that is up against Andrea Rocchi so I don't th I think I've underused him which is my fault obviously fairly professional personality as well good decision making good bravery good aggression he's a decent little player um, but yeah his progress it's gone up a little bit this last this season but in the last year, it's not moved too much. So that's my fault. So, uh, so yeah, I do need to try and get him in a little bit more. Um, because we've been doing so well in the league, I've sort of put in some, like, backup first-team players like Nasri or Gardini. I've put them in instead because they're better than him. I sort of lost sight of the youth element, but that's because I was so fixated on winning the title because I thought, we've got a good season. We've got a good thing this season. If he makes a mistake and we drop two points and it costs us the title... I look back and think it wasn't worth it. But I do need to get him in. So Arenya is definitely going to play some more time in the first team coming up. The next one then is William Zanetti. Now, when this guy came through, I remember looking at him and thinking, it doesn't really impress me. It was I sort of asked you guys what you guys think. And I said that he sort of might be, maybe he comes into a decent backup play. But actually, his value is between 5.4 and 8.24, 8.2 million. And he's actually coming on quite nicely. 17 as well. He's kept his, eight, he's kept his five star potential. That's only up against Troyani, I suppose. But um, I do think this guy could become a nice backup player for us. I really, really do. Um, he is more of a centre midfield attack. That's where I've been using him. I've played him twice in the league this season, and he's got a 7 rating. And I've played him once in the Europa League, and he got an assist. So only three times he's been sort of staying in the under-18s, under playing really well. But again, he's kept his five-star potential. 
and he's just gone better and better and better throughout. So I thought I'd show you get this guy in March rather than in December because there wasn't much to talk about, to be fair, in December. Um, but he's gone up again since then. So Zanetti is another one that's kept his five stars, but the main one is Framura. Now, he's just got an injury. I think it's an ankle injury. Yeah, twisted ankle, so he's out for two weeks. But this guy is worth between 12.5 million and 20 million. Now, obviously, ignore the downward arrows. That's because he's injured. But he's going to be, hopefully, our Troiani replacement. Now, Troiani's good. Don't get me wrong. But I think this guy could be Bonomi level. Um, big, big shout. But I do. I played this guy in the league once as well, in the Europa League once, and did really well in both games. So this guy will be playing a lot more time next season, especially in Serie A next season, because if we do win the title, we don't need to win it again. We're only then aiming for the Champions League. So obviously I will be trying to win Serie A, and I'll keep trying to win Serie A, because if you win Serie A, more reputation, better youth intakes, and assault the Champions League. But I want this guy, I want to see how this guy gets, because by 18, he could be full-blown Serie A. Obviously he's had a bit of an injury, so he's gone a bit down. But again, that is me sort of a year wasted a little bit because I've not played him in the first team. So, yeah, a bit on me, to be honest. I need to play him next season. But he's on the bench for the second, first team. I just don't tend to bring him on because games have been quite tight in a lot of them. Yeah, uh, it's just one of those things. So, Framura is going to be getting more game time. Everyone else is sort of... I'll, I'll show you guys Slovak because a few was interested in him. He does look good, doesn't he? And he's gone up to professional personality now. He was fairly professional, I think. Does look decent. He could definitely become a good left back for us. Probably a backup. Um, again, he's four stars up against Rocky, so that's not really a bad thing. If he gets close to him, then that's fine. But at the moment, he's playing right back in the under 18s because um, Arena is playing left back. So two nice little full backs there. Um, but that's about it for the players. Now, like I said, I'm going to play some of the games um, and I'll come back at different points of when you guys need to know and need to see things, right? So catch you in a second. Couple of days after the intake, we did get our Europa League opponents. We've got Valencia in the quarterfinal. Valencia only four star team, seventh in La Liga. I can't see why we couldn't beat them, to be honest. Um, their key player, let's have a look at their key player, is Farid Hadji. Oh, that's the guy that was playing for Napoli, isn't it? That had to be sold. Yeah, 51 million. He's very good, actually. So I'm hoping that the rest of the team's not like him. Let's have a look at a few players from them. We've got Michael Torres. I mean, they've, yeah, they've. They've got a good team, actually. Seventh in La Liga. They look like, like an Atalanta level, don't they? Yeah, I think we'll, we should be all right over two legs, I think. Just had the next-gen results through, and we finally got a winner of the next-gen. Matteo Conte is first. Bichetti is second. But we also... We also got a guy, I think, in 20... Is it 20? Ah, uh, there he is. 32nd, Gondo. So we got three in the list, but the main thing is we got the winner, Conte. So we can tick that off. On the bingo sheet as well. Just beat Atalanta 3-2. Fiorentina also won. So the gap is still five points. We just finished the Napoli game then. The one that I thought was potentially the biggest banana skin. 2-1 away from home. And Gisti scored the winner in the 89th minute. Fernando got us on level terms in 74th. They did have a guy sent off. They were better for the majority of that match. Until they're sending off. So we got very lucky there. Fiorentina also won. So that Gisti goal there. Potentially. Could be a massive, massive, massive goal in the title race. And it's quite cool that he came off the bench to score it. Leone got injured just then for two to three weeks. So he's out of the first leg against Valencia, which is really annoying. Just finished the second leg against Valencia. We went through winning 3-2 and 3-1. They weren't as good as I thought. But the big thing is Real, Mad uh, Real Betis, sorry, not Real Madrid. Real Betis have just come from behind against Liverpool and beat them 5-1. So Real Betis are obviously a very, very good team. Dortmund have been knocked out as well by Montpellier. I thought Liverpool and Dortmund were the best two teams. I do think Liverpool would have been the best team, but actually Montpellier have got a good team, and Dortmund is not as good as I thought it would be. So that's quite like quite similar level. I know it sounds crazy because it's Montpellier, but they've got a tycoon in France. So we'll see who we get in the next round. Um, and also, I think there's another one as well. Yeah, Toulouse are 2-1 up against Feyenoord. I don't know what's going to happen there. We're going to get our draw in a second. I'll let you guys know the draw. And then obviously on to the next games. Here's the draw then for the Europa League semi-final. Toulouse against Livorno. Real Betis versus Montpellier. I've had a look at the teams. I think we've got a good chance. I think Real Betis have got the best team out of them all. But that doesn't really matter. Um, I think we've got the best draw though. Toulouse are seventh in Ligue 1. And Montpellier I think are fifth. Um, Real Betis are fifth in La Liga. But yeah, Toulouse like I said are seventh. 
And obviously, we're first in Serie A. So Fiorentina just beat Roma, and then we've just beaten Juventus away from home. The toughest game out of the way. Fernando was the main guy. Got a hat-trick in the game. I would say it was probably about even the match, to be fair. I think the just superb finishing from Fernando was the thing that changed the game for us. Gisti as well got another act with another goal. I think Gisti enjoys big games, to be honest. He scores big goals in big games, and uh, and that one there was to put us, I think, 2-3-0 up, that one. Then they came back to 3-2, and I was a bit like, oh, okay. And then Fernando scored in the 71st minute, and we held on. But five points in front of Fiorentina, five games left. That was probably the hardest game out of the way. Guys, we just lost to Cagliari. They were 19, so I put a few more of the youngsters in, backfired, but then I saw AC Milan beat Fiorentina, so I actually got away with it. But I'm a bit annoyed at myself there. Because I'm so used to playing youth players, I'm going to show you what happened. I, I put too many in. I put way too many in. I thought we'd just, I thought we'd be fine. I put in Zanetti and Fremura in centre midfield. I put Arenya at left back and I put the goalkeeper in. To be fair, the goalkeeper did well and so did Fremura. Arenya did okay, but Zanetti didn't play too well. And uh, yeah, we... Uh, Fernando, I thought Fernando might have been able to sort of like carry us through the game. That's pretty stupid of me. I thought we'd just get the win. And maybe I just went, I overestimated how good we are, I think. And uh, yeah, we ended up losing. But then I saw AC Milan beat Fiorentina. So actually, we got away with it. Or you can look at it the other way. We should have been eight points clear with four games left. So I don't know. I think it's a good thing because obviously they've lost. But yeah, that was very, very stupid of me. We've got the uh, Europa League semi-final next. I won't be taking any more chances in any more of the games. So uh, so let's get on to this Europa League semi-final. First legs of the Europa League semi-finals then. And they were both very boring. We were the better team in our game, away from home, which is very, very hopeful for the second leg at home. Real Betis and Montpellier, obviously, nil-nil as well. I'm not sure what went on in that game, but I'm back with the second leg in a second. Seventh minute against Toulouse, then we've got a penalty. Come on then, Fernando. 1-0. Come on. Early goal in the semi-final second leg. Let's go, lad. Bachetti's through on goal for two. Oh, Bachetti. Oh, no. That was such a good chance for 2-0. Won the ball in the middle of midfield. Fernando gets it. Out to Leone. Come on. 2-0 before half time would be amazing. Gondo then. Leone. Leone hits it. Oh, good save. It has been all those this half. We should be 2-0 up. Corners coming in from Leone then. Back post Bazagli's there. Doesn't get the header. Another corner. Keep the pressure up. Whipped in from Conte this side. Front post this time. No one's won it. Second header, one over the bar. Another highlight straight after then. This time, they're starting with the ball in every highlight, but we're taking the ball off them. I'm hoping that happens again. Looks like it might be their highlight this time. The right back flying forward. He's got it. Sidkov across the box. What a save from Christian Bianco. Wow, I thought that was 1-1. What a save. Maybe he's not done after all. Donner comes to nothing then. Hoping that's half time at 1 0 because that was a good highlight for them. Probably should have scored there. Should be 2 1, I think. Montpellier winning 2 0 as well in the first leg for them. Half time is here. And we're just going to say no complacency. No complacency. And we're just going to. There we go. Corner coming in then. Andrea Rocky misses. Oh, that's a poor, poor header. They've had a guy injured as well. We've been the better team here. We really need to make sure we uh, make this count. Bianco to Renai. Conte to Leone. Out to Buschetti holding the width. To Fernando, I think he's offside. Yeah, I think he is. He is. Good finish, but offside. Still 1-0 then. 20 minutes plus stoppage time left. 84th minute then. Mid a couple of subs. Royani into Gisti. To Leone. To Toffinari. Oh, okay. I just brought Toffinari on a right back there. Gondo uh, was tired. Another highlight straight after that. Troiani picks it up to be midfield with a nice interception. Gisti out on the left wing now. Took Buschetti off. Powering down that wing. He's powered inside. Oh, that would have been nice for him if he scored that. That would have finished the game off. We really need to hold this on now. Hold this out. We've been the best team by a distance. Montpellier. It looks like Montpellier we're playing in the final. Blow that whistle, ref. Yes, we're in the final. 1-0. Well deserved. 3xG created nearly there. Gonna tell them to not get complacent. He was anxious. I'm just going to say you weren't very good. You weren't very good, Vangioni, mate. Stop complaining. Okay, then. On to the final we go. But first, Serie A. 
Fiorentina have just beaten Inter Milan away from home. That was their sticky fixture that I thought they might slip up on, but they've managed to get the win. They've got Cagliari and Lazio, both home games, and I think they'll win those games as well. So we just need to win out. We've got Verona next. I wish Inter Milan had got some points there. Obviously, if we win this next game, we go five points clear against Verona. And then if we win that, we just need a point from the last two games and we are champions. Lot to happen, lot to get through. Let's do it. Right at the bottom of your screen there, we just drew to Verona. We threw it away. 2-0 up, then 2-2. We went 3-2 up and I tried to hold out the game, but they scored Ravaglioli again. They've come back to haunt us a little bit. They have dropped down to eighth like I thought they might do, but that has implications potentially on the title. It's Europa League final time then. We've got Montpellier. The league is going to come down to the last game of the season. I'm not entirely sure how it works. We're three points clear. We've got better goal difference, better head-to-head. -head. I don't understand how we've not won the title just yet, but we've got a game after this to seal that against 20th in the league, Spal. We are away, but we're against bottom of the league. The Europa League doesn't count towards the completion of the same, but this is obviously just something I want for the bingo sheet for the trophy cabinet and also for reputation so this is really important i want to at the end of this save i want to become a five star team that would be amazing last time i did this it was a four and a half star team with a team in spain um, and england was a four and a half star team as well so i didn't actually get to five stars so i really want to get to five just a little personal thing for me um this is a team though bianco in goal gondo right back bazagli and renai at center back rocky as always at left back Conte and Troiani behind Vangioni on the right. Leone in central attacking midfield. Bichetti on the left, holding the width. And the main man, Fernando front. Fernando's got 37 goals in all competitions. What a player. Let's do this. Here we go then. Europa League final. Straight away into the action with a highlight. Wow, Gondo gets it. To Bezagli, to Troiani, to Leone. He's decided to have a shot. Good save. Corner coming in then. 4-2-3-1, two, two DMs for them. 4-3-1 with two CMs for us. No header again. We're not very good in the air, guys. We're not very good. <laughs> we don't score too many headers. Corner coming for them. I'm hoping they're the same, but Musawi is very, very tall. Oh, my God. Okay. That was, uh... That was a bit worrying. <laughs> Only 43,000 in the stadium. I think it's the PSV stadium. So it's in the Netherlands, anyway. Fangioni's got a bit of an injury there. Can we cross it in? We can. Leone. Troiani. Bazagli! Yes! Eight goals for the season for Bazagli. He's the only one that does score sometimes. Yes! Big time. 17 years old, man. 17 with his green hairband on. Big, big winner in a final. Massive, massive. I'm hoping... Every single time I play a big game like this, I always think if a player does well, I think it means they're good in big games. Obviously, it doesn't, but it's nice to see who does well in the big games and who doesn't, and you can sort of get an idea of who you should be playing, etc. Although, I don't really have much choice. My first team is pretty much my first team. Another corner coming in then. Bezagli. Oh, he doesn't win the first header. Conte, though, gets it. Gets robbed, though, from Johnson. Is that their highlight? They. Uh... Oh, Leone's won it back again. What a player Leone is. Gondo. Bezagli. Back to Troiani. Renai to Troiani to Bezagli. We're playing quite patient this time. Troiani to Va Conte's got it. Fernando's made a fantastic run. Conte's got it again after a good tackle from their player. Crossed it in. Fernando over the bar. That would have been a fan. That would have been such a nice way to go 2 0 up. Half time then. Go win the trophy for the fans, guys. Come on, we can do this. We can do this. They've got a very good team in Montpellier. I had a look through. Very good team. In a second goal, don't we? Another highlight starts up and it's them with the ball this time. On the left-hand side, Frölinger. Fernando decided not to get that. Not, in, not entirely sure why. Good save from Bianco. I thought that was a goal. thought that was a goal. Corner coming in then from Alex Fabiano. Headed back out. He's decided not to get it and take the throw in instead. Interesting decision from him. Oh, Vangioni's got it. Don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. Oh, he's coming inside. Good save, great save. I, I wanted him to pass to for Fernando there to, to, to try and finish that. Leone then. Going front post this time. Bazagli's there. We can't win the first header again. 
Headed out. Fernando, though. Bichetti to Renai to Rocky. We get a shot off here. <gasps> Bichetti! He's onside and he's missed. Oh, he's onside and he's missed. Corner for them straight away. Don't do this, FM. Don't do this to me. We need the second goal now. ASAP. Rocky then gets it from the goalkeeper to Bichetti. Bichetti's flown past Manga. A great turn. Back to Rocky, to Bichetti, to Leone. Yes, 2-0. Come on. 21st goal of the season from Leone. That was all Bichetti, let's be honest. What a turn. Puts it back. Fantastic vision. 2-0. Oh, no, no, the highlight starts up. I just want no highlights now. <laughs> we want none. Dondo's picked it up, though. Gone back. He's, he's a clever. He's a clever guy. He's gone back. Over from you. Gondo's won it again, though. Gondo's a fantastic right back. Oh, oh. No mistakes, Bazagli. That is fantastic composure, mate. On the chest. Brings it down. Back to the keeper. Safe. Bichetti again. He's got... He's made a mistake this time. Their attacking midfielder's got it. Johnson. Vangioni's missed the tackle. Not a good sign. Oh, we missed another tackle. That's not a good sign, guys. This is a goal, I think. Yeah. When your players miss that many tackles in a highlight, unfortunately, the match engine punishes you. 2 1, great finish. That is their Segundo Volante, by the way. Must use that role a little bit more. People say it's very, very good. They've changed formation, though, this time. They've gone to a DM formation. Their left winger has been injured. Gondo looks knackered. I'm going to take him off, even though he's been playing well. I know it says that Gondo's injured and he feels he can shake off the knock, but I'm not sure what to do here. What do we do? What do we do? Do we take him off? Fernando's not playing especially well either. Leone, tired. Vangioni's tired. We could put Tommaso Pucci on, on the right wing. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, let's, just he's nervous. He's nervous, but he does like big games. I don't know what to do about that. Um, Gardini looks pleased. Zanotti looks pleased. I would have liked to have bring Toffinari on because Toffinari is actually quite decent. I don't know, you guys can't see his attributes there, can you? He's only got 10 tackling now. Gone down. Um, I think we probably just keep him on. Might be a bad decision. I'm just thinking about extra time as well because we want fresh legs in extra time if they score, which I'm hoping obviously we, they don't. Uh, we're doing quite well. Three minutes left of normal time. Six minutes added on. Please no highlights. Please no highlights. Please no highlights. Come on. Come on. Blow that whistle, referee. Oh, my God. Let's go. I have never won the Europa League in a Youth Academy Challenge. I didn't win it in England, I don't think. And I definitely didn't win it in Spain. And I'm, I think this will be the last time I'll ever be in it as well. But that feels so good. The reputation boost as well. I don't think it'll take us to five stars. Serie A, though, if we win that next, that might take us to five stars. You never know. The Champions League, if, when we win it, definitely will. But not sure when that'll be. I'm hoping it'll be in the next couple of seasons. But it might be in another 10 seasons, this Champions League, honestly. It's just about a lot of luck involved. Um, yeah. What a win that is. They're a good team, Montpellier, as well. They're a good team. Uh, Fernando ghosted in that final, didn't he, really? 6.5. Yeah, he was the worst player on the pitch for us, which is interesting. I hope that's not a theme, because I'm going to need him in the Champions League. But uh, but we were the best team. But that is a fantastic win. Uh, I'll be back in a second, guys, with hopefully the second uh, trophy of the season, Serie A. I forgot to hit record like an idiot, but we're 1-0 up against Spal in the last game of the season. I just didn't hit record. I looked down there. I'm glad I did, because when I played this game without any sort of footage and I'd have been gutted. So, whew, okay, all you've missed, guys, is 17 minutes. We scored with Vangioni. I'll show you the goal now. We just had a goal disallowed there for offside. I'll show you the disallowed one first. Vangioni to Buschetti to Leone there. Very tight. Good finish, left foot. Um, but I will show you now the goal in the first nine minutes there. Here it is then, nine minutes in. It was Buschetti to Vangioni. Crossed it in, back post, header. And you guys are right back to where we are now. Like I said, I'm so glad. I hit record there because that would have been a nightmare. Serie A title on the line and I didn't hit record. Whew, okay. Here we go then. 20 minutes in. Spal at bottom of the league. I 
I'm not sure what's going on here. Rocky's going to win it. He's bullied him. Leone to Fernando. Bichetti. Bichetti's lively. Gondo. Gondo's come on nice this season as well. <laughs> there he is. Bichetti. 2 0. I was hoping this was going to be the case because you never know on FMD. Sometimes banana skins. Fiorentina are drawing. It'd be nice. 93 points, by the way, we've got this season. 93 points. Jetty's got an injury. To come off. We'll leave him for now because he's recovered some condition down there. Bazagli gets it. bazagli has been amazing as well. I just got another couple of messages about the uh, the defensive mid sorry, the centre midfielder, um, Framura. And he's now worth like 20 million, 20 plus million. So next season, I'll be playing Framura a lot more. Troyani's obviously very good. But I think Framura's ceiling is higher. So I'm going to try and play Framura next season. Um, obviously in big games I'll play Troyani, but in games against like this game, for example, I didn't want to do it now because the title's on the line, but next season I'll be playing Framura because I think he's got potential to be like a very, very, very good centre midfielder. Like le top level Champions League centre midfielder. So we need more of those players in the team. Because Troyani's only, as good as he is now, that's as good as he's ever going to be, right? Partner coming in, Leone. Come on, Bazagli, win this, lad. There he is. Oh, what a save. It shots in, isn't it? We just need to keep scoring and scoring and scoring because you never know an FM. Be a massive crumble if we lose this, though. Rocky gets the ball on the left hand side. No, he's more of a centre back, but Rocky does really well. Bichetti. Leone finish the game off I think I'm pretty sure that's onside 3-0 looks like we've done what we needed to do and the Serie A title guys <laughs> looks to be on its way to Livorno 50% of the sale will be finished then like obviously the, the aims are Champions League and Serie A you don't have to win in the same season that would be ridiculous after this game as well I'm going to go to the bingo sheet and get a few of those things ticked off as well Conte whipping the ball in Zagli front post. Leone scored that. Interesting. Okay. We don't score many headers from corners. So it's nice to see us when we do. 4-0. And we're sort of cantering away here. We're sort of just... Jogging. We're jogging our way to a Serie A title, which is crazy. I didn't see us getting 93 points, though. It's helped that Inter Milan have not done very well, even though the goal difference is good. Guarantina are drawing. So this will be a five-point clear title win. The Europa League and Serie A in one season is absolutely amazing, by the way. Bizagli again, headed over this time. Um, I should have put some of the youngsters on the bench, shouldn't I? But I just didn't do that. I'm an idiot, apparently. Um, let's bring on Gargiulo. Let's bring on Fino. Who else can we bring on? Let's bring on... Zanotti, you've been around for a bit, mate. You you deserve to come on the pitch. Get some of the older guys on. To enjoy this title win. You got one more sub as well. Who should we bring on for that? Gardini. I think Gardini worth it, isn't he? Go on then, Gardini. Not sure what happened there. Fernando with a pot shot. Another highlight. A lot of highlights going on. Gagulo, look at that green headband, man. Zanotti. All these guys from Serie B. Amazing, amazing achievement from them. Fernando's dropped deep. Gardini. He played a big part at some point as well. Final, we know how good he'd been. What a switch. Gisti as well. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And they're still doing it in Serie A. Unlucky Gagulo. Zanotti's winning. Can we get a fifth? Fino. Oh, what a save. I thought Fino was going to score in his final game. I think he'll be leaving at the end of the season or he'll be retiring. I think he's. I think he wants to leave anyway. Fiorentina nil, Lazio nil. Very, very interesting. But that's it, guys. That is 50% of the... Uh... Oh, I feel so good. 50% of the save complete. Serie A. At Spal. We didn't win it at home, but it doesn't matter, does it? We've won it. Green headband there from Gagiulo. Another green headband from uh, 
Exactly, it's centre back. With LeVar had headbands. Thought Bianco was doing the floss then. He's just stretching, it's fine. There's an instant release on him there. Leone lifts the Serie A title. There it is. Fantastic. Unbelievable. No signings. All academy players. Oh, you love to see it. Love to see it. You absolutely do. Congratulations. I think they drew Fiorentina, didn't they? Nil-nil. They did. We ended up five points clear. 93 points. So we don't have to actually worry about Serie A anymore. Obviously, I will. I'll try and win it as much as possible. But, um... Apparently, I'm one of the best managers around, and I'm a bona fide legend, Lucarelli says. Director of football, Lucarelli. Let's sign him up. Give him five grand a week. Good lad. He's accepted it on the spot. He's a legend. He deserves to be here while we're uh, while we're fighting for this. We lost in the final to Inter Milan in the Nationale final, under 18s. 5-4 on penalties, which is... Annoying. In fact, that's why I couldn't put the youngsters on the bench, isn't it? Because they're playing there. Yeah, so Fremura, by the way, look at him. He's absolutely flying. He's 16. 12 million to 20 million. I just think this guy could be elite. Like, top-level elite. So, I need him in the team. Because if we're going to win the Champions League, I need more of these players in. So, he's going to get so much game time next season. He's going to play 30 games in all competitions easily. So, yeah, I'll be, look out for him in the next update. After that season then, guys, I'm going to go to the bingo sheet and see if there's anything we can tick off before the next season starts. Here we are then, bingo sheets here. We've not had five players on the next-gen list, but we did have a player win the next-gen list, didn't we? Uh, there we go. We've won the Europa Conference League. No, we haven't. Youth player scores over 30 goals in a season. That's been hit this season from Fernando. Fantastic. We've won the Europa League, which is amazing. Player gets top score in the Europa Conference League. Player gets top score in the Europa League. We've won Serie A. I don't think Fernando got top scorer in the Europa League. Don't think he did. Uh, let me just go and check that really quickly. No, he didn't. He didn't. Fine. Um, not a problem on that one. Win a European competition. That one's been ticked off. Won a double. Amazing. Player scores for Italy. We can tick that one off as well. We haven't hit reputation five stars yet. We might have become the top 20 in the world. We'll have a look at that for next season. Um, player gets Champions League, best goalkeeper. Player gets top score in the Champions League. So, um, did we hit? We've hit the 500 game mark now. Unbeaten at home in the league. That's interesting. Let's have a look at that. I think we might have done that, you know. Let me just show you guys quick. Yes, we have. Here we go. Let's have a look. Home record. Yeah, we didn't lose at home. We've got that. That's amazing. Did we score? Oh, we was four goals off 100 goals in a season. That's annoying. We can't take that one off. Youth player assists over 20 in a season. We got that last year with Conte. Um, we didn't score 100 goals. No unbe we got unbeaten at home in the league, which is nice. We didn't concede less than 15. I'm not sure if we've got that yet. The World Cup, I think, is on the season after this, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, we're not on the Hall of Fame yet, I don't think. And I don't think we're going to ever win the Europa Conference League. So that's going to be something we're just not going to get, unfortunately. Youth player is league player of the season. Fernando could get that. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll see about that and we'll come back. But um, that will be in the next video or the one after that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We've got a league and European trophy double there. Fantastic. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Let's go for the Champions League next season. Let's introduce the goalkeeper as well and Fremura, the centre midfielder. Thank you for the likes on the videos. Thank you for the comments on the videos as well. Leave a subscription on the channel. That would be amazing. And until next time, as always, I'll catch you then. Goodbye.